Hey everybody, Bridget here. So as you can see behind me, I've gotten some new bookshelves over the weekend. Very, very excited about that. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I did kind of a little follow as I go along. I meant to take pictures as I was building the actual shelves, but I just wanted to get those done as soon as possible because I knew it was going to take hours upon hours to get my books organized. And to be honest, it's not really organized the way I originally wanted it, but it's whatever. It's whatever, so. We'll, we'll steal the way it is. It does look good for the way it is, but anyway. On to the purpose of the video. I'm here to do a tag for you all today. It is the How I Read tag. It was created by... It was created by Enya's Corner, and I was tagged by Noelle from Blue Fox Fables to do it. So let's start. Question number one. How do you find out about new books to read? So I think this answers pretty widespread for most booktubers. I would have to say that booktubing has definitely helped me find mo more material to read. Not the actual act of booktubing, it's watching all of the booktubers that I do. I follow... I follow maybe like 150... I don't know. I didn't, haven't even tried counting how many people I follow on the booktube community. It's a lot, and I watch every single one of your guys' videos, don't get me wrong, I might not comment on it, but I do watch it, and I listen to everyone's opinions, and usually, especially if it's a booktuber that has the same taste in books as I do, I've rarely been disappointed with their recommendations, so I definitely usually watch a lot of, especially, okay, so especially reviews, and then book hauls, but I usually don't buy books that I see in hauls unless they're like, I've been wanting this book so I got it. Not the books that are like, I don't really know a whole lot about this book, but I'm going to try it. Because I try, try not to get a book unless I've been told that it's good by somebody, so there's that. And then also, I love, love my Goodreads app on my phone because I do a lot of browsing in the bookstore. and. I will never not use my Goodreads app because it has the barcode scanner on it. So I'll just scan the back of the book and if it has maybe like a 3.8 or higher, I'll probably check it out. I'll kind of scroll through a little bit of the reviews and see what people have said. And usually that really helps me to pick a good book because I used to not really use any ratings when I would pick books. I used to just say, this book looks cool or this book sounds cool from the synopsis in the back. And I would buy it and many a times I've been disappointed. But now I have my app and I will never not use it while I'm at the bookstore. So we have that. Question number two is, how did you get into reading? So, I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't read when I was younger. I just didn't read a whole lot, and when I did read, it was mostly, well, I grew up with the Harry Potter books. I did read those. Other than that, I just mostly read a lot of manga, especially all throughout middle school and high school. I was a really big anime and manga freak and loved, loved, loved anything and everything manga related, so I read a lot of that. It wasn't really until I started booktubing that I got into this obsessive reading, I guess you could say, you know. Yeah. But I wouldn't change it for the world. I love this hobby of mine and I cannot wait to collect more and more books. I want to fill. This room here with my new bookshelves is empty besides these bookshelves and I plan on making this a library slash study room and it will be filled with more bookshelves and more books and I cannot wait because I'm excited to collect more. So yeah. Question number three is how has your taste in books changed? as you've gotten older. I wouldn't say it's really changed. I mean, my what I'm in the mood for changes, but books that I've read when I was younger, I still enjoy now. Like the Harry Potter series I still enjoy, um, all the manga I used to read I still really enjoy. I just have to be in the mood for it. I mean, you guys know, in like August through October, before I went on my little break, I was reading nothing but manga, which before that I hadn't really read any manga all year. So. It really depends on my mood, and, but besides that, like, I still read the same things and I'll still enjoy the same books, I'm pretty sure, even years from now. Question number four is how often do you buy books? As often as I have extra money, really. I can't really explain this without going into like really deep detail, but one of the reasons that I was gone for so long is that I recently got a promotion at work. So with a promotion comes a raise, 
to, I've been recently buying more books than I had while I was gone. While I was gone, I didn't really buy a whole lot. I mean, my book haul seemed pretty large, but it was the span of like a three to four month buildup of books, which that book haul would normally be a monthly book haul for me, you know, before that. So I would say for my little poor period, I was going maybe other, every other week or so. And now that I have money again, possibly that way again. But I have realized that I'm more picky with my books now and, and I'm a lot more cautious about spending money on a book unless I'm absolutely certain that I want that book. In fact, I went to the bookstore the other day with my boyfriend and we were browsing and I ended up not buying a single book. Like I really, really wanted to buy a book and he was shocked. He really was. He was like, you're not buying a book? Oh my God, that's, that's shocking for you, Bridget. And I was like, I don't know. I did buy something at the bookstore, but it wasn't a book at all. It was like a little figurine from Game of Thrones. I was even surprised myself. So there wasn't really anything I was wanting to read. Question number five is, how did you get into booktubing? I really honestly don't know why it is I randomly decided to look up a review on YouTube for a book. I was like, I wonder if there's a, I think it was The Hunger Games or something like that. I was like, I wonder if there's a review on this book online. And I remember what booktuber it was and I haven't seen any videos from them recently. So I don't know if they still are doing booktube videos, but it was um, Chapter Chicks. They were the very first booktubers I ever started watching and they were the ones that really influenced me to do it. I don't know if you guys know this, but back in 2012 I actually started my booktubing. I put up one video and hated it so I took it down immediately and had my channel for months and months and then finally decided you know, how I was going to do videos and I was new to recording myself and new to editing and everything so it took me a while to really decide how I wanted to go about doing everything and that's why I didn't start again until January of last year is when I officially started my channel and I still to this day say that Chapter Chicks really got me into doing it. I loved all of their videos and of course I found more booktubers that I loved. I'm not even going to try and name all of them because there's so many that I love. Question number six is how do you react when you don't like the end of a book? It depends on if I really hate the ending or if I was just disappointed with the ending. If I'm really not liking how the book is going and I know that I'm going to hate the rest of the book, I will usually actually stop reading the book so I don't really know the ending. There's been once that I've been compelled to finish the book even though I really hated the book and I'm not even going to mention which one it is because there might be some people who love it and if you keep up with my videos you might actually know which one that is because there was quite a few videos where I rambled about how much I did not like it. I don't know why I finished reading it. I really don't because I should have just stopped. I should have. I should have. But with books that I'm disappointed with, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people will get like physically angry and like throw books, but I have this thing with even if I don't like the book, I just like having a book on my shelf, especially if it's a book that has a pretty cover on it. I don't know. I guess I just do my review and say my disappointments and if it's a book that's in a series, perhaps the next one will be better. And I kind of just get my hopes up that there will be something better from there. And then there's times where if it's a really disappointing ending, I just have to go and reread a book that I loved because it put me, that other book put me in like a bad mood. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go read something that I know I'll love. But that's really rare for me to hate the ending of a book. It's been very, very, very few books that I've been disappointed with. And the endings of books are usually a lot better than the beginnings of books for me. Like sometimes it takes me a while to get into it and then the ends of the books are really good. Question number seven is how often have you taken a sneaky look at the back page of a book to see if it's a happy ending? Until three days ago, I could say I never did that, however, I recently did it to one book and I absolutely regret doing it. I will never ever sneak a peek at the back of the book ever, ever, ever again. And that was Storm of Swords. Yes, I kind of spoiled a little something and it wasn't like the very last page. I kind of just like snuck a peek at the ending of somebody's, one of these ending chapters 
and totally spoiled something big for myself. And I'm almost done with this book. I mean, it's still a wonderful book, but I really, I think I would have been more in shock to read the part that I spoiled myself for, and that would have been a better feeling, because now I already know what happens, and I'm excited about what happens, and I can't wait to read it. It's not gonna change my thoughts on this book, but I really, really hate that I did that, because I love the surprise that comes with reading through the book without peeking, without knowing what's gonna happen. It's more entertaining that way. Who wants to spoil that for themselves? Not me. And then finally, question number eight is, how many people are you going to tag and who are they? I don't know how many people I'm going to tag and I have no idea who because I kind of just started recording this without even thinking about who I wanted to tag. So I'm gonna think about it right now and I will leave all those names below. So check below to see if you are listed. And thank you again, Noelle, for tagging me to do this. It was a lot of fun and I'll see you guys later. Bye.